Situational Judgment Lesson 7. So this lesson is going to be focusing on the first one of those key principles that we talked about, which is patient safety. Now patient safety is obviously one of our top priorities in a lot of scenarios, so it's a very important one to go through in detail. And it's the very first thing you're taught in medical school as a medical student is to always be safe. It's a very, very important quality when you're practicing medicine, so it's a good one to get in early. A safe doctor will be a good doctor. And there's three kind of areas of safety that we're going to cover. Obviously your patient safety, but also the safety of your colleagues and finally yourself. So if we start off with your patient's safety, this is the avoidance of any unintended or unexpected harm coming to patients during the provision of healthcare. So this can be when they're in hospital or in the GP or in an outpatient clinic. Whilst care is being provided, we have an absolute responsibility to maintain patient safety. So any scenario where the patient might experience a defect to their physical or mental health because of our actions is always a very inappropriate thing to do. And patient safety can be compromised. Um, this can happen when mistakes are made. So it's really important if a scenario is involving a mistake being made that has affected patient safety, that you notify somebody to try and prevent this event from happening again. And often this involves making a written record so filing an incident report or documenting the mistake in the patient's notes, just to make sure that nobody else makes the same mistake. So often it's not that you will get massive trouble if patient safety is compromised due to a mistake, but it's very important to make sure that that mistake does not happen again. And in order to do that, you need to document it and report it correctly. Therefore, in most scenarios, reporting an incident where patient safety is at risk is a very appropriate thing to do. And often this is time dependent, so a quicker response will be more appropriate. We've got an example here of a patient safety question. So Irv is a second year medical student who is in the lift about to get to her placement, but notices an odd smell in the lift. She is worried that this smell could be something dangerous, but she's not too sure. She's also worried if she turns up late, her consultant will shout at her. How important are the following factors to take into consideration for Irv when deciding on how to approach a scenario? So the first question that we got in response to this scenario is that the smell could be something potentially toxic and harmful. How importantly would you rank this? Pause the video quickly and have a think. So this would be a very important factor to consider because Irv has a duty to patient safety and if this smell is something toxic or dangerous, then it's definitely very important for her to act upon it and report it. The next question for this scenario is how important is it for, the, for Irv to consider that the consultant is likely to reprimand her for being late and affect her grades? Pause the video and have a think. So this, in this scenario, would be of minor importance. Obviously, patient safety is more important than Irv's overall grades. However, she could deal with this scenario by going to her consultant and reporting the smell in the lift and therefore kind of killing two birds with one stone in that she turns up on time and gets to report the incident in the lift. And the last scenario we've got for this question is how important is it for her to consider that it's not her job to deal with hazards like these as she's just a medical student? Pause the video and have a think about this one. And it's not important at all that she is just a medical student in this scenario. No matter what level she was at, from medical student to consultant, she is the one who encountered the situation, so she has a responsibility to report it. Even if she doesn't then deal with it or action anything, she has that responsibility to report the incident because patient safety might be at risk. So moving on from patient safety into your colleague's safety. Sometimes fellow doctors can be under a lot of stress or very tired or working very hard and that can put themselves or patients in danger. So there's kind of the double effect of that. And as well as you have a duty to protect patients, you also have a duty to protect colleagues or protect patients from that danger of those colleagues. So in situations involving colleagues, um, it's always best to try and speak to them, find out what's going on, see if they're stressed, see if they're tired, see if their mind is on other things. With their permission, you can then maybe report their status to a higher colleague or HR, human resources, um, just to allow them to get the help they need to be the best doctor they can or you can try and persuade them to seek help themselves. And perhaps a way to do that would be to encourage them to go and seek help because otherwise they will be endangering patients. So looking at the example question for this one, we've got Annalise is a general surgeon working with her colleague Nate, 
who recently informed her that he had a HIV test. Annalise isn't aware of the results of Nate's test, but is worried as she read somewhere that HIV can be transmitted more easily to patients from surgeons who are HIV positive than those are not. She recalls a conversation where Nate said that if he was HIV positive, he would not be brave enough to tell anybody about it. How appropriate are the following responses by Annalise in this situation? And the first response we've got to this scenario is, she informs occupational health without Nate's permission, as she feels it's in the patient's best interest to do so. Pause the video and have a think how appropriate you think this might be. So this would be C, inappropriate but not awful. Obviously Annalise's intention there is to keep patient safety well and minimise damage to patients. However, she is kind of breaking Nate's confidentiality there and um, not allowing him the choice of whether he informs or not. So although she has good intentions for patient safety, she's definitely not gone about this in the right way. Second scenario is she tells Nate that he is acting irresponsibly and threatens to inform occupational health if he doesn't. Pause the video and have a think about what you think you would do in this scenario or how appropriate this action might be. And this one should be B. It's appropriate but not ideal. Again, she is prioritising patient safety, so it's an appropriate action to tell Nate to report his health status to occupational health. However, she is being quite rude and aggressive about the situation, which could put Nate off or make him feel very uncomfortable. Um, So in this scenario, because patient safety is at risk, her action is more appropriate. However, if patient safety wasn't at risk, her action of being rude and quite aggressive towards a colleague would be less appropriate than this. And finally for this scenario, the uh, response is speak to Nate privately and reassure him that if he is HIV positive, he can get help and still be allowed to practice in the same field. Pause the video and see what you would think about this one. And this would be A, a very appropriate thing to do. She is being sensitive and kind about the situation. She hasn't assumed whether he's HIV positive or negative because we're told she doesn't know the outcome of his status and she's being very reassuring towards Nate. So this is a very appropriate course of action. And the final section of this lesson is moving on to your own safety. So using the same principles as colleague safety, you as a doctor may get very stressed or overwhelmed or overworked. And you should always put patients first, obviously, but if your own health is taking an impact, then you need to step away from that and make sure that your health isn't affecting your work and therefore patient safety. So it's important to recognise yourself and recognise how you are doing in of yourself and make sure that your work is not compromised by emotions or pressures that you are under. And that's the end of lesson seven. To unlock the rest of the series, which is 70 videos, including live walkthroughs and over a thousand different questions, just click the link in the description below.